Well, hello there. I am Buck. This is Sawdust Solutions. Welcome to my shop. Today I got something a little different for you. I don't know if it's going to work or not, but thought we would try it. Uh, as you know, I'm a little new to uh, this YouTube thing. So. But what I've done, I, or what I do, I do a little time in front of the camera just talking to it. And this is practice. You know, it's like anything else you do, uh, where you uh, cutting dovetails or, or whatever you're doing, uh, the more you uh, practice, the more you do, the better you get. So every morning, I do a morning in the shop with Buck, uh, and I just talk in front of the camera. I don't even plan anything out. I just talk. Well, the one I did yesterday uh my wife looked at it and she says you need to air that well see someone said i needed to air the yo-yo video and it's the biggest you know i got almost seventeen thousand views in that yo-yo video so and all i did was just talk in front of the camera all right and just well just practice so what you're about to see is uncut, and it's just me talking and coming down here and just start talking, start filming, and, and just, just I just talked about stuff that come to mind. Of course, I'm a little all over the place, but I'm anxious to see what you think, and leave me comments if you would telling me what you think about this. Like I say, I'm new to YouTube. And and I, I talk in front of the camera to try to get comfortable, because uh, in in a lot of ways it's difficult. But take a look at the end of it. Leave me a comment, and I don't know. Tell me what you think about it. it I may never do it again. But uh, wife well, taught me in it. She's the one who taught me in doing this YouTube thing. She worked on me for three years to get to do this YouTube thing, and I finally did. Kind of proud I am. I did. Uh, I got over 300 subscribers. I never would have thought in 100 years I'd ever do that. But take a look at it. Let me know what you think about it. We'll just go from there. Morning in the shop. This is morning in the shop. Mornings, maybe it's mornings, plural. Don't know. However, uh, practice a dovetail with my new uh, moxin vice yesterday. Let the glue set up. I just turn that. Turn that. Okay. That was stained right here. Took the stain right off, didn't it? Pretty good on it. But a lot of times, like it needs a little help around the top. Uh, let's see. Got, uh, 184 views on my shop tour. I got a comment on my shop tour. Uh, said I, I made the guy smile. So. 
<laughs> well, uh, actually, it's, uh, <coughs> actually, it, it's, uh, I'm surprised at how well it's doing, if you know what I mean. Hand to one working is the way we need to go. It takes it up to another level. I mean, hand planes, it's just, it, it's, it's amazing the level you, you're at. You can take some cheap wood and make it look good. Good to the feel. It's it's amazing. Make it look like you meant to do it. Yes, it takes it to another level. And the sat oh yeah. And the satisfaction of doing a good job. You know what I mean? The satisfaction of doing a good job. That just makes all the difference in the world. Let's see what I can do with this one. It just, that little extra is what does it. If you do hand planing right, <coughs> sandpaper can't touch it. Sandpaper absolutely cannot touch it. Sandpaper cannot, <clears throat> cannot touch it, I'm telling you. Yeah. Now, I know this is just pine, but what, what we got in it was just junk wood, you know. But I'm telling you, that right there, well, you can feel from this side. That right there, sandpaper will just make it worse. That is... That is something to see. There's your... Dubtails. Well, this is mornings at <clears throat> with the shop. Working on some... That is... I don't know. That's heavy. That's I think it's a magnolia limb. It's made out of pine. It's lighter, but I need some paw rivets. So we're going to end up where it, you wrap that string around it. It winds up looking like that. 
So I need to get some pop ribs. It'll probably turn me one more today. <clears throat> I'll have me three. It's the ones you wrap a string around it, you know. Uh, so, uh, actually, I'm going to model after that. Kind of make it look like that one. It ain't going to be just like it, of course. But, you know, that's what hand stuff is. But, <clears throat> this is... Uh, this is in the mornings. See, mornings in the shop. That's where I'm at. Mornings in the shop. So this is uh, my shop. It, I'm, it's it's taking shape. It sure is. Uh, it it is really taking shape. I'm uh. I'm getting ready to do that. I decided to go with MDF. <clears throat> I am going to go with uh, the MDF top. That way, I ain't got to worry about uh, the top moving on on me, you know. So, and I get one quicker. I, I really need something. If you're going to do this hand who would work and, and I've been working right here I don't know if you can see that this table this bench or just outfit table I managed to here that's 34 inches uh, that bench over there is 35 37 that's a little tall that one there it's a little bit tall I'm thinking the 34 would work because by the time I put the moxing vise on it, it seems to be fine. So when I'm cutting him dovetails, this is the area. And what it winds up being, I think it's about 40 inches off the deck. Just under 40. But so over there, uh, it's, it puts it uh, 43. That's just just a little much. So I'm thinking <clears throat> it's not going to be over 35. Uh, there's some hand dovetails that I've cut. Uh, I got one more right there. I thought I'd try it just to see how that does. Practice. It's like you know, that's why I'm doing this this deal with the camera. Practice where I can talk to you. So I can talk to the camera. Oh, just practice. But it, it's funny at times I uh, at times I uh, just six o'clock at times. I find myself talking to the to myself while I'm working, and but when the camera's running, I don't. Uh, so I I don't know. Uh, I just and that's why I practice. I practice. Um, try. That's what I need to do. Practice. That's what I'm doing. So, the thing about it is, uh, <clears throat> I gotta get, I gotta get good at it. If you know what I mean. I, I think that's what I'm lacking right now is the actual. Well. I enjoy woodworking, and I don't think that's the issue. However, uh, it seems that uh, that seems to be the problem, if you know what I mean. I, I just got to figure that out. 
I just got to figure that out. And uh, I still think the hand tool woodworking is the way to go. I enjoy the, the machines. It makes it quicker. But there's a... Whenever you're... Uh, whenever you're cut everything with the machine this could dial it in a lot closer i worked hard yesterday my radial arm saw will cut at a 90 better than the the dewalt uh miter saw so i worked on that miter saw and i got it where it's a lot closer but then the closer you get it, then you can bring it in here and get on the, the shooting board and dial it on in, if you know what I mean. So, see, you do that right there, there is, I mean, sandpaper will just, you're losing quality. You do that right there. That's got a feel to it that sandpaper you're just not going to get. If you know what I mean. The thing about it is, you could take the shooting board. No bigger, no bigger than this piece is. Let's see if I can get y'all to see this. Well, I tell you what, I bet you the better look would be down here. <clears throat> what I do, find my reference surface, reference edge. Now, what I'll do, I'll flip it over, and I'll bring it off this edge at an angle where it just chamfer this edge, this corner right here. And I'm going to need some blade. And what that does, it prevents tear out when it comes out the back side. There we go. Now that makes this at a 90. <coughs> now, let's say I want this at a 90. I've already got that one. Now this here will put this at a 90. Wait, well, let me get it set. All right, here we go. Right, now this is at a 90 to this. Okay. So... I don't know what this side's doing. Yeah. So this, this is what I call dimensioned. So everything's perpendicular and, and uh, parallel. <coughs> so what I'm doing now. I'm going to get this face like I want it. Going, these two faces here. Your tools, you get them dialed in really good. It doesn't take much. It doesn't take much. <clears throat> you gotta find that spot. See it jumping? So this isn't flat. But at the flat you get it, you gotta. Okay. 
All right, now <coughs> what we'll do <coughs> we'll check the ends. I think I've already done this, but we'll go ahead and hit them again. run your hand down and stay with the blade as you go down your hand goes down with it you want to keep it flush against your plane to make them shavings that you're needing so now this is this in here it's what i call the dimensioned board <coughs> yeah about the same so i will what i'll wind up doing is cutting uh i'll practice me on this one cutting some dovetails i've got to the better you can get your uh the the, the more dimensions you can get it in other words everything parallel and perpendicular in other words this face is parallel to this face <coughs> this edge perpendicular to these, these edges this end perpendicular and parallel and parallel so parallel 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 perpendicular perpendicular and see no matter where you put the square it's going to be fine it's a rectangle so is this one so these are the same thickness so now one's thick or another but that don't matter so I'll probably make these the pen. It's a little thicker. I make your pens a little longer. Uh, so <clears throat> what I'll do, I'll come down here after a while. I ain't quite ready to do it yet. Uh, but what I'll do, I will probably check it again. Because what happens if if you don't get your stuff correct it will leave a gap here or there and it will actually be no fault of your own it would be because the wood wasn't flat parallel perpendicular you know <clears throat> and when that happens it leaves you little gaps if you know what i mean and now you're chasing your your uh technique on the dovetail cutting and really you should be chasing a technique and getting it your wood dimension properly so I, that's my take on it anyway i know the closer i can get this thing to the, what i call dimension everything parallel to one another perpendicular to one another uh the better off you are i mean the better chance you got of making and that goes for box joints or anything else. Uh, if you got a little bow and you never got it flat, <clears throat> correct, and you're going to do a miter, the miter's not going to fit. Uh, you might take clamps and force it in and stuff like that, but wouldn't it be better to get it all dimensioned like it should be to where the joints will fit together better? It, it saves you so much headache in the long run. So that's the way I see it. <clears throat> but anyway, <clears throat> and ever so often, <clears throat> and I enjoy cutting dovetails when I got the time. And I enjoy cutting dovetails when it's a part of the project. I, I cut up some dovetails on a project. And it wound up being... I thought an excellent job, uh, but I had to redo them for another reason. But it wasn't because of the dovetails. I think it come out just, just what I was looking for. <clears throat> 
So I have dovetails everywhere. I like I like the looks of them. I think it's a good strong joint in drawers. What you have, uh, for instance, th this is the side of the drawer. This would be the face of the drawer. When you pull the natural mechanics of what you have here, if there's no glue or nothing, it's still going to, you'll pull that drawer. You follow what I'm saying? And I have seen dovetail drawers and, and chest of drawers that were, I know, over 100 years old. And that, because they didn't have no glue, no metal fasteners, no nothing, but they were still working. They was a little loose. But if you're 100 year old, you've been open and shut 10 million times, probably. I mean, you'd be a little loose, too, if you know what I mean. <clears throat> well, I thought they, but if it's box joints that it didn't come apart as loose as it was, minor joints that it didn't come loose, where uh, this makes it as strong as the wood. The, with today's glue, and you get it in there, that now this joint now is strong as the wood, but you do away with the glue and just and say you didn't have glue. I mean, there was no such thing. You can do metal fasteners, which... Just go to the dovetail. Uh, I, I don't know. It, to me, it's a way to go. And it's a sign of the your, your fine woodworking. <laughs> you got uh, jigs where you can... Uh, it still looks good. But there's nothing like hand to hand cut. Look at it with it. They don't make a bit that narrow. There's nothing like it. Uh, to me, it just looks better. And and there we go. This is mornings in the shop. Uh, the thing about it is, I'm probably going to turn another top today. Uh, I got a project coming down the pike that I'm going to do with this wood here, and it's called Prairie Boxes. I don't know if I got enough African Baduke. The last one I, I did was out of African Baduke, which is this right here, but I don't know if uh, I have enough there. I just have to look, get it out and look at it and, <clears throat> and see. But the Purple Heart, I'm trying to decide what I, I'm going to go with. <clears throat> what are you thinking? Uh, what are you thinking? You want a contrasting wood. Uh, I can do oak. I thought I had a piece of oak here. I do not. That's kind of odd. Thought I had some oak. It's not as uh, dark, but it's lighter than. Well, let's just take a look at it. Well, we'll just compare it. You want to? All right. So what we got here is this is Purple Heart. I just, all right, let's say this, this is the contrasting that you're going to use. See, that would be contrasted pretty good. All right, let's say, do I have any cherry? That's, well, I can use poplar, but I'm wanting to use, I don't know if I've got any. Surely I got some cherry. Yeah, right here. So what I was wanting to see cherry's a little darker. I that's probably not what I'm looking for. I don't know. Um uh, I got well, I tell you what, I, I really don't want this because I have got, don't have enough of this, I don't think. This is maple. Uh, 
I don't know. <coughs> going to tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going, I got to go to Cool Springs. And usually what we do, and we got plans to do it this time. <coughs> it's, they got a woodcraft up there. Well, they got one in Chattanooga, but I mean, it is just down the road from this doctor's office. <coughs> so what we're uh, thinking about doing going by there and I might find some see if I can't find some yeah th this is oak I don't I don't know I will right, we'll figure it out I'd like to have a a uh, much lighter wood I'll figure it out I can't remember what I used and that last, I know I used African Badook for the dark wood, but I can't remember what it was for the lighter wood. But it was real light. I might find me some white pine that's got a real, real light color to it, if you know what I mean. See, that, that's got a... There, they've got some that... Oh, here we go. This might do this. How light that is. Cause I don't know. Do y'all see anything? Box Elder is so figured that I, I hate to use it because it, you know. These are the small legs in this prairie box. I know y'all don't know what where I'm at on that, but. All right, look at that. Um, one of the boxes was going to be done out of mahogany. See, see, it's a little lighter, so I really need some light stuff for it. So here's the oak. So I, I need a, a, a real sharp contrast is what I'm a hunting. So we'll probably go by Woodcraft and see what they've got. It doesn't take a lot. However, it does uh, take some, you know. Uh, well, anyway, I'm going to sign off here, and I'll check back with you on the more, and I'll let you know. Well, I'll see y'all before we go to Cool Springs. But I will uh, check back with y'all tomorrow. Like I say, this is Mornings in the Shop with Buck.